Over 90% of Malawi's arable land is infertile. This poses a significant challenge for smallholder farmers who tend to inorganic fertilizers to boost crop harvests. Without them, the fields yield barely enough, and with the rising cost of fertilizer, many would rather go without the import. But this is not an issue to one Joseph Bello, a lead farmer at Gooke Irrigation Scheme in Insanje. The small-scale farmer from traditional authority Mlolo uses Griscidia tree to improve soil fertility. He adopted this way of farming way back when Imagine Africa introduced the concept to farmers in his area. Um, our technologies usually are based on the green manure cover crops. And the, this concept of green manure cover crops, we have a number of uh, trees which we are promoting. First of all, we are promoting Grisivia to improve soil fertility. And also we are promoting Acacia gapini for live fencing around the fields of these farmers who are practicing this concept. The idea is to protect livestock from invading into the fields of our farmers. Also, we are promoting other green manure cover crops such as uh, Labulab, beans and also pigeon peas. For three months, I followed Bello at Gooke Irrigation Scheme in Insanje, starting, of course, from the day he planted his main seed in May this year. After preparing our field with Grisidia leaves, we find seeds and when planting, we measure a distance of three centimeter rollers from one hole to another. And from one terrace to another, we measure five rollers. The next visit was in June. At this time, three weeks had gone since Bello planted his maize crop. Bello applies Grisidia tree leaves as a form of top dressing fertilizer and the crop's response is but impressive. After three weeks, there is impressive progress. As you can see, with the application of Grisidia, the crop is doing well and it is growing fast. This is the field as seen in July, some eight weeks after. The maize crop is showing remarkable progress, has huge stalks and green leaves, which is a sign that it is well fed. All I can say is that great things have happened to my maize crop. This means that Grisidia has provided all the necessary nutrients to the crop more than chemical fertilizer. Impressed with how Grisidia trees is transforming lives of farmers at Gooke Irrigation Scheme, District Agriculture Office Makanga EPA in Insanje, in the month of September, organized an open day for farmers in the district. I am urging farmers to change their mindset. Long time ago, our forefathers used to grow crops without relying on chemical fertilizer and they were harvesting more yields. But when chemical fertilizer was introduced, our land is no longer fertile and it can't produce. Therefore, we need to switch to the leguminous tree of Glycidia, which restores fertility to the land and makes it productive. I am pleading with farmers to plant more Glycidia trees and apply the leaves to their fields and increase crop yield and save money, which could have been used to buy fertilizer. <laughs> Extension worker at Makanga EPA, Jambo Shenyenga, says the number of farmers who are adopting the new technology is increasing. Most farmers have adopted the technology just because through the demonstrations they learned a lot and this has also increased their production. 
at the household level. Uh, as you know, that uh, in Lower Shire, we have um, um, persistent dry spells and floods due to climate change issues. So with the planting of Grisidia, it's part of afforestation, so it has restored the environment. Towards the end of the month of September 2024, I visited Velo for the last time. This was the time to reap from his sweat. I am super excited that the demonstration work that I was doing with support from Imagine Africa has finally bared fruits. Using only glycidia as fertilizer, I have harvested big crops of men than farmers who use chemical fertilizer. I am so happy. Country director for Imagine Africa, Chimwemwe Limani, expressed satisfaction after seeing that lead farmer, Joseph Bello, has demonstrated that it is possible to do farming without relying on chemical fertilizer. He is appealing to well-wishers to join hands with his organization in replicating this method across the country. I'm very excited uh, to find out that uh, our technologies are working, where we are promoting green manure cover crops and the permaculture technologies and the, uh, for example where we are standing now is a food forest for Mr. Bero who has proved to use a uh, uh, fertilizer uh, which is coming from trees that's agroforestry and uh, mainly we are promoting uh, a Grisidia tree and in this farm it's not just only depending on one crop there is maize there are also bananas and other crops which this food forest has. So this is a technology which has been proven and uh, it's, it's working. Our wish is that uh, the government and other development partners should come to hold a hand with us to scale up the prototype because we have found out that this is working. Now our major challenge is to scale it up to the other farmers who do not know about this technology. Reacting to this, agriculture expert Tamaning Hono says it is true that leguminous trees such as Grisidia improve soil fertility and increase crop yield, only that adoption rate has been low in the country. There had been a number of research that was done uh, in the mid-90s to try to look at uh, some trees that are, uh, have the ability to fix nitrogen into the soil. So Grisidia was one of the trees that uh, uh, was researched on, but we also have got other trees like, like for example, Fridebia, which is in Jewa, we got in Sangu. So the leaves of these trees, they are rich in nitrogen, that when they fall into the, into the ground, they are able to fix nitrogen in, into the soil. So, uh, but, but the challenge that we have is that the adoption rate of this technique has not been uh, impressive. Uh, it's something else that I think farmers need to be encouraged. And I think probably your story could also be one of the things that uh, uh, could be used as, a, as something to showcase that the agroforestry is a technique that can also be used to ensure that um, uh, we are increasing soil fertility, but also reduce the use of uh, chemical fertilizers. So indeed, this technique is something else I'm very familiar with. Uh, it, it is a, a scientific known as agroforestry. And it's a technique that um, ha has proven to, to work, though the adoption rate has been very, very low in the country. So why do you think the adoption rate has been slow, as you have put it? What, what is the reason, particularly? I think most of the farmers, they would want to look at the quick results. Because in most cases, when you're talking about uh, planting trees together with the uh, uh, with with crops, and then for, for the results to be seen, it may take quite a, a bit of time. But if you look at crops like Bicidia, for example, it's a, it's, a, it's a plant that grows a bit faster and the uh, farmers are able to reap the benefits maybe within a year or two. But most of the farmers probably are not patient enough to, to, to do that. Now, we've seen uh, prices of fertilizer on the markets skyrocketing. Should we say this is the way to go? Yes, this is the way to go, taking into consideration the challenges that we are having with the um, inorganic fertilizers. So I think farmers need to be encouraged to, to look for alternatives. So agroforestry is one, one of the ways 
that farmers need, need to, to go through. Of course, I know that much of the talk about alternatives has been on the uh, organic fertilizers like manure and mbea and all those things. Uh, I, I, I have not heard much in terms of talking of agroforestry as the one of the technologies that that could, uh, could be used to, to ensure that we are supplementing the use of inorganic fertilizers with, with the uh, intercropping with, with trees. So I think it's something else that needs to be put back on, on the agenda. Let farmers know about these technologies. Let them be encouraged. Those probably that used use, use to try could, could be um, um, like case studies that need, needs to be put forward. United Nations Sustainable Goal number two seeks to double the agricultural productivity and incomes of small-scale food producers, in particular women, indigenous people and family farmers, through secure and equal access to land, other productive resources and inputs, knowledge, financial services, markets and opportunities for value addition and non-farm employment by 2030. With this innovation, Belo is hoping that the method will be adopted by many farmers across the country and realize this goal.